Right, Hubert, the bench, 42 points. Um, you, you went 10 deep in the first half, which I, I, I think might have been the first time this season for the first half you've gone that deep. Uh, I just wanted to see, you know, what uh, what your plan was. Did you feel like coming into this game this was going to be that kind of a game where they could make a big contribution? No, I just, you know, um, I didn't have a plan to play 10 players in the first half. I just, you know, we needed a spark uh, in the first half. We needed energy and enthusiasm, and we needed it to come from the bench. And uh, we were just, I was just going down the line to, to be able to find that. And, and we did, you know, Jalen came in and played really big minutes for us in the first half. I thought Dontrez's minutes were terrific on both ends of the floor, not only offensively, but rebounding, uh, defending, using his athleticism. I thought that was great. And um, Seth and uh, Tyler Nichol, I, I thought they played extremely well. And, you know, one of the things that I have said is that, you know, we have depth on our team. And the great thing about it is when we need it, we have that ability to put guys in and to make impact plays on both ends of the floor. And I was really happy to be able to get extended minutes for those guys and that they stepped up and played extremely well. On Dontrez, I mean, he hasn't played a lot this season um, as a sophomore, and he got his first points of the year today. Uh, what is it taking for him to get to the point where he is getting consistent minutes? Well, one of the things that I always tell the guys is with me, um, my foundation is you will always get a chance and an opportunity, and not just one chance, you will get chances uh, throughout the year. And I said, you know, but the thing that I can't control is when, where, how, and the manner in which you'll get those opportunities and chances. The thing for them is their responsibility is when your number is called for you to be ready. And that's just a huge testament to Dontrez that when his number was called, he was ready. His practices the last week have been really good. Um, his attention to detail, his effort, I've um, been um, really proud of him. And um, you know, we put him in the game tonight, and I thought he was a huge difference maker for us in the first half. We were struggling to find some rhythm on the offensive end, and he hit that three, and um, then we were off and running. So I was very proud of Dontrez. Tyler was a big part of the late push at Virginia Tech, and he's gotten six minutes in the first half of the last two games. I guess he had seven today. Did that help him a lot, That the way he played late in the Virginia Tech game and the confidence that you showed in him and keeping him out there? And have you seen maybe a slight difference in him since then? I think all the guys are confident to be out there on the floor. You know, one of the things, you know, that I've talked about is, you know, when we were on the road, it's just – we were playing so many games and traveling, we couldn't practice. And so now that we've been home for a week and a half, we've actually had time to practice. And I know that sounds simple, but it's really a big deal. You know, just having an opportunity to build habits, to get out there and practice and find a rhythm. And also for me as a coach, to be able to coach that and to see that in practice as opposed to in the heat of a game, a one-point game in the second half, you know, it's, it gives me confidence, it gives them confidence, and um, I really feel like being at home the last week and a half has really helped us in terms of becoming a better basketball team because we've been here and we've been able to practice. I can stay on Tyler for a second. Aside, we, we all know that he can shoot his confidence, have a, teammates have a ton of confidence in him. What else has he been doing since practice started that in which his game is coming along in some areas that will give him a play time. Well, I mean, he's he competes. I never have to tell Tyler, can you can you go harder? He's a guy that always competes on both ends of the floor. A great example of that was in the second half. And one of the things that I have been stressing is for us to have a presence on the offensive glass outside of Armando. And you know, we've always stressed to three, four, and five, attack the offensive glass, and Tyler did that. He didn't actually get the offensive rebound, but he kept the ball alive and actually led to him getting his first three in the corner in the second half, and it was because of that extra effort. And that's who Tyler is, knocking down that three, but always making the extra effort. Yeah, but you missed you miss the opportunity to go Allen Iverson with the, with the practice talk. But um, <laughs> how much better do you feel about – 
about where you guys are in terms of execution now, you know, now that you have been home and, and as you said, have been able to practice going into another big game Saturday at Ohio State, I mean, well, against Ohio State? Well, I mean, obviously it's not a finished product, but it, it has, we have improved. <laughs> I mean, in the week and a half that we've been here, we're playing better defense, we're rebounding better, we had 24 assists, so we're making an extra pass. We're shooting better. And so does that mean that we're exactly where we need to be? No. But I feel like that we're moving in the right direction, and you know, it's a great opportunity to play against a really, really good Ohio State team in New York City this Saturday, and we're excited about the challenge. Coach Davis, speaking of improvement, it seemed like a big emphasis tonight was – moving the ball quickly up the front court. Did the, did the depth and bench kind of help you guys motivate each other to play quickly in kind of a bench style of Carolina basketball? Well, I mean, that's something that we've been emphasizing all season, but I feel like that we've actually done it in the last couple of games. I know I mentioned after the Georgia Tech game, you know, that three minute period right before halftime that I felt like this is the first time that I looked and go, wow, that we're running like a Carolina team. And I felt like we did that tonight. Everybody was running and we were we were able to get the three things that we were looking for in transition. We're looking for layups and dunks. We're looking for pitch ahead wide open threes by our best three point shooters. And we're looking for deep post catches by our five men. And we were able to get all of them tonight because of, um, because of you know our ability to run in transition. Seth had three assists in his first eight minutes, and all of them were in Armando Seal. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing buddy ball, I guess. And so, but um, Seth does a really good job pushing the ball and transition. As I said, I feel like he's at the top of the list in terms of you know fast guards with the ball. Um, one of the things that I always tell Seth is attack, 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 because I feel like. He has the athleticism and the ability to be able to get to the paint, get to the rim anytime that he wants to, especially in a, in transition. And, and I, you know, it, it may result in a turnover. I actually want him to be even more aggressive because I think he he understands how to make plays and get the ball to the right people. And so he did do a really good job finding Armando, but it was also Armando's effort um, running before and getting in position to be able to catch that pass and be able to score in transition. Hubert, how, how will you know when the cord is cut from last year's team? That's something you said at the Georgia Tech game, cutting the cord from last year. How will you know when it is? That's a great question. I don't know. I don't think about last year at all. The only thing that are on my mind is this team, these players, our locker room, our growth, our chemistry, our togetherness. I don't think about it, and I don't, I don't talk about it at all. That's a great question. I don't know. Coach, you think it is the same for the players at this point too. I don't know. <laughs> they don't talk about it with me, okay. <laughs> and we don't talk about it. And I don't think that thinking or talking about last year is of any benefit at all. I just, I drove here today and I looked out my front windshield. <laughs> And I looked a couple times at my side mirrors and a couple at my rear view. But the reason why I looked briefly at my side mirrors and my rear view mirror was to keep me going forward. And so that's, that's the proper place for where last year is. And this is where we're looking for now. We're looking straight ahead. There's no benefit of looking, looking behind. <laughs> Coach, you just spoke on togetherness and not worrying about last year's team, but you know the present moment. This is not the final product. Uh, what is this year's identity of this basketball team? I don't know. You know that's something that we've talked about about having an identity, uh, both on the offensive team, on the offensive side, and defensively. You know, I've mentioned before, right when we got back from Portland and Indiana, one of the things that I asked them to do was write down what they wanted to look like. What do you want to look like on the offensive end and what do you want to look like defensively? What is your identity? And so 
Um, they wrote these things down. Everybody signed the piece of paper, and I have copy upstairs, laminated in my office, and I show it to them all the time. I tell them, like, these are your words. This is what you want this team to look like. And so since they wrote it down and they signed it, um, I hold them accountable to it. And so that's what we're trying to build to throughout the entire year and just see what the end product looks like. Hubert, yeah, the, the, the pipeline from New York had been, you know, a, a part of Carolina's program for, for a long time. And I think when you are first hired, you mentioned you wanted to play in, yes. in New York City. How, how, you know, I don't know if how important is the right word, but what is the significance of Saturday being able to play in MSG? Well, it's significant and important. Um, it's significant and important for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, um, you know, that's where Coach Smith used to take us every year. I mean, we always, every year, played a game in New York. And I just remember playing in Madison Square Garden, and if we didn't play there, we played in the Meadowlands where the New Jersey Nets used to play. And so we always, every year, had a presence up there in New York. Number two is that's where I started my NBA career, and I played there for four years. And it's just a special place for me. I haven't been back to the Garden since I retired from the NBA in 2004. And so to go back there again, the place where it all started for me personally as uh, a professional um, is really exciting to me. And then also the four years that I was here at North Carolina, we always had three or four guys from New York on our team. And they always had a nice chip on their shoulder. And, they, and I like those type of guys. So I like to have a presence recruiting up in New York. And so um, those are reasons that every year, as long as I'm head coach, the Tar Heels will be up in New York. Is there a memory from playing in MSG, the Mecca, that stood out, stands out to you as a, as a player in college or in pro? Oh, there's so many memories. I, you know, I, I remember the first time that I played in Madison Square Garden was my freshman year, and we were in the preseason pre NIT. And it was the first time that I was ever in New York City, and Coach Smith, called me up to the front of the bus and I sat with Coach Smith and he was pointing out all the buildings to me because I couldn't believe how big the city was. And we ended up losing to Missouri in the semifinals and then we beat Indiana in the consolation game. And so that was my first time in the garden. And then being there four years, you know, playing for Pat Riley and um, Jeff Van Gundy and, and all those years we were in the Eastern Conference Finals or we got to the NBA Finals and we lost to Houston in Game 7. And so I just have a lot of memories of playing with Doc Rivers and Patrick Ewan and John Starks and Charles Oakley and Charles Smith and um, some really good teams and unbelievable coaches that I were able to be around uh, every day. All right, thanks.